trumpets, blares the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he comes. something like this before, and I had the feeling that come nightfall, the town of San Marcos would be ripe for a sample of crude old-fashioned Western justice, a lynching. I could tell it with the whispers of the people in the street, the way they kept watching the jail. And their intended victim was young Carlos Valero, the son of my longtime friend, Don Ramon. Hey, Harvey. Yes, Red? I think Valero's coming out of it. Good. Get me a cup of water, will you, Red? Just an hour ago, Red and I had ridden into the border town of San Marcos on our way to pick up some cattle at the Valero Ranch and had learned that Valero, still unconscious from a beating, was being held by the sheriff on a charge of murdering a rancher by the name of Taggart. Taggart must have got one good lick in before Valero knifed him. Here, Carlos. Drink some of this. You'll be all right. Take it easy. That's good. Senor Cassidy, my friend. Sheriff. Jail. Senor Cassidy. Why am I here? Has this been a bad dream? Your knife and Taggart's back weren't no dream. My knife? Taggart? Sheriff, I've known Valera since he was a kid. I knew his father before that. They're not the kind that go around sticking people in the back. All I know is what I saw. And there's always a first time for everything. Carlos, you want to try to tell me what happened? I'm so mixed up, Senor Hoppy. But this, I swear to you, is the truth. Yesterday, I received a note from Trini. And who is Trini? She's a girl who works in the dance hall. She said for me to meet her in her room at the hotel at midnight. Just as I walked into her room, something hit me over the head. And that's all I remember. And what happened to this note that Trini sent you? I have it here. Be in my room at the hotel at midnight tonight is important to you, Trini. Oh, my head. And you just take it easy for a few minutes. I want time to think this out. We'll be right handy here. Do you believe Valero's story? Well, of course I do. Well, I'm not dumb enough to. Well, who asked your opinion? Well, I'm a sheriff, ain't I? Yeah, I've seen dog catchers make a better sheriff. Well, I don't have to stand here and be insulted in my own office. Then sit down. Red, Red. The sheriff has a right to his own opinion. Till we convince him otherwise. I had run into this kind of sheriff before. Well-meaning enough, but a little dumb. By the way, I wear a marshal's badge in my own county. Maybe you better swear me in as your deputy just in case anybody gets the idea of trying a necktie party. Yeah, I better. Tiger was pretty popular around these parts. Yes, he was. I wanted that deputy's badge so I could operate within the law. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, 
I'll do all I can to help you, Mr. Deputy. You see, I read a great many detective stories, and I have a theory. Well, that sounds very interesting. But I'd like to know what time Valera came to the hotel. At exactly five minutes to 12. It was all very unusual, but I knew he was a friend of Miss Trini's, and she being one of our special pets. And what time did Tiger get here? At exactly 12 o'clock. I happen to know the exact time because I always have my cup of tea at 12. I see. And where was Trini all this time? At work, as usual. Oh, she has a perfect alibi. She left here at 10 o'clock to go to the saloon and didn't get home until daylight. It was she who discovered the murder. You never heard such screaming. Has anything in the room been disturbed? Heavens, no. I've read enough detective stories to know better than to let anyone do that. I'd like to take a look at the room. Oh, yes, sir. It's the last room on the left on this floor. You go right down to the end of the hall. Now, I have a theory. Yes, I'm sure you have. But do you mind if I listen to it later? My theory is that when Miss Trini sent those notes, she got her dates mixed up. And when Taggart found Valero, he... I had come to Trini's room hoping to find some lead, something to work on, and I found plenty. In the first place, the room was in perfect order, not the least sign of a struggle between Valero and Taggart. A note that I'd found on Taggart's body read exactly the same as the one Valero had given me. The dust on the sill had been disturbed. That could have been caused by someone crawling in through the window. A tall man could have pulled himself up without too much trouble. And sure enough, there were fresh heel marks in the dirt under the window. Now I began to see it. Someone had hid behind the door, waited for Valera, and hit him over the head with a gun, then taken his knife and killed Taggart when he came to the room. It was a smart piece of framing, but who was he, and why? Maybe Trina's notes would give us the answer. When I'd finished telling the sheriff and Red what I'd found out at the hotel, I'd swear that's the same handwriting in both notes. That's what Hoppy just got through telling you. Guess I better bring in Trini for questioning about the notes. No, not yet. I want to get another sample of her handwriting. And she can't lie about writing them. That'll be your job, Red. Just pretend that you've got a lot of money and uh, maybe you've had a little too much to drink. Oh, no, Hoppy. How can I do that? You know that dad ratted stuff always gives me the hiccup just the smell of it. <laughs> Try putting some cotton in your nose. Try putting some in your mouth, too. Might keep you from talking so much. Why don't you shut up, Red? Now you got work to do. Get over to the saloon and have a talk with Trini. And I don't think Trini will be too hard to meet. Get out of here. <laughs> given Red a few minutes start. I didn't want anyone to know that he was tied in with me. But Red has the habit of doing things the hard way. And I wanted to be near in case he made any slip up and got into trouble. The reason I wanted to talk to you, Miss Trini, was because you remind me so much of my little daughter Susie that was killed in a stampede. <laughs> there she was, riding at the head of a herd of stampeding cattle. Her little golden curls waving in the wind. Trying to save the settlers. <laughs> I thought you told me your daughter's name was Jenny. That was my other daughter. She was a pretty little thing, too. Blue eyes, golden hair. My boy. Oh, I've had a sad life, Miss Trini. <laughs> hey, you. Do you mind taking your trouble somewhere else? You're disturbing our game. Don't you go telling me what to do, mister. I'm sorry if I disturbed your game, mister. It was just that my bereavement was too much for me. For two cents, I'd toss you out of here. Come on, Russ. It's your deal. You're holding up the game. 
Come on, senor. We will bring to the memory of your daughter. Tell you what I'd like you to do, Miss Trini. I'd like you to give me a little memento of the occasion. Memento? Like what? Oh, like uh, maybe an autograph. You know, you, you write something on a piece of paper. Write me something nice. All right. What shall I say? Oh, say to my dear friend Red, the man I'd most like to meet at midnight. This will remind you of your daughter? Oh, uh, yes. She used to like to go on midnight rides with me. <laughs> Read it to me. A mi querido amigo, el señor Rojo. That's in Spanish. Sure, I wrote him in Spanish. But I can't read Spanish. That makes us even. I do not know how to write in English. I knew that something had aroused the interest of the man named Ross, and I didn't know how far Red would go. Now that he was confused, I had to get him out of here in a hurry without tipping my own hand. Oh, right. If you don't like him in Spanish, we'd tear him up. Now that's a fine thing to do. After all the money I oh, spent on you, Mr. I know you've been drinking, but I think you've bothered this little lady about long enough. Now get out of here and leave her alone. Well, come on, get out! If you hadn't handled that old coot, I'd have done it myself. Well, I thought it was about time to do something. Thank you, senor. I was beginning to get tired of him. And anyway, I like you much better. Maybe you would like Trini to buy you a drink, yes? No, thanks, not right now. I got things to do. Here, buy yourself a couple of drinks. I may be back later. I hope so. Sorry I messed things all up, Hoppy. I guess I'm just no good. What are you talking about? Nobody could have done it any better. And what a liar. You were wonderful. I was? Well, sure. You proved that Trini couldn't have written those notes, didn't you? Did I do that? You certainly did. And now we're going to have to find out who sent those notes and why. That's an impossible task. Ah, uh, maybe not. Who brought the note to you? A man by the name of Ross. He's a gambler who hangs around the saloon. Yeah, I know who he is. What do you know about this Ross, Sheriff? Oh, not much. He rode into town a couple of weeks ago with a man named Bailey. Who's Bailey? Oh, he's a big man with... Chin whiskers, heavy sideburns. Does he have a knife scar on his right hand? I never noticed. You wouldn't. Now, Carlos, I want you to think hard. Were you and Tiger tied up in any way? We both like Trini. No, that's not what I mean. Is there any reason why anyone would want to get even with both of you? Not that I can think of. Wait a minute. You might have something. About six years ago, my father and Senor Taggart found out that a man by the name of Blake was smuggling arms across the border. Oh, I remember the case. Taggart and Don Ramon brought Big Blake in. He was convicted and sentenced for five years. Do you have the file on that case, Sheriff? Must be around here somewhere. Maybe in those old filing cases. Well, let's take a look. Two hours and a half dozen filing drawers later, I found what I was looking for. The picture and description of Blake was close enough to fit Ross's pal, Bailey. He could grow a beard, but that knife scar on his right hand would always give him away. Now we had a suspect and a motive. But how to prove that Blake, or Bailey as he called himself, had killed Taggart was the problem. Then an idea hit me. Hey, Sheriff. Is there some place nearby where we can hide Valera for a while? Yeah, I've got a little ranch house, three miles out the north road. Good. Red, use the back door, get down to the liver stable and hire a light wagon and bring it around the alley back of the jail. And bring a tarpaulin. A what? A tarp. Oh, you, you mean a tarpaulin. Look here, Cassidy, I don't like this high-handed business. What's the idea of thinking you can take my prisoner? Take it easy, Sheriff. 
I'm just trying to give you a chance to prove that you're smart enough to bring in the man who really killed Taggart. You willing to take a chance with me? I'll take a chance. Let him out. Right back. All right, Sheriff. There you are, Carlos. I think you'll be all right here until I get back. As long as Red's here to take care of you. Yeah, you can depend on me, Hoppy. Sure. Maybe you better tie a string on it. Well, I better get back to town. You just take it easy. Vaya con Dios, Senor Hoppy. Thank you very much, Carlos. And if everything goes the way I hope it will, you'll be cleared of all charges in a few hours. Hasta luego. Yeah, hasta luego. I wasn't half as optimistic as I'd made it sound. I knew that if Blake was my man, I was up against someone who was not only a cold-blooded killer, but a mighty smart one as well. All right, sir. On the way back to town, I told the sheriff everything I wanted him to do. When I was sure he had it down pat, I'd sent him ahead to slip into town the same way he'd left it. sheriff would be able to handle his end of the job. The chips were down and I'd have to play this game through to the last card. How about having that drink with me now? I'm busy right now. How about having a little talk? What about? Business. What kind of business? Cattle. Cattle's not my line. I'm not interested. Not even if they happen to be Carlos Valero's cattle? Just what are you trying to say? Hey, everybody! Valero's escaped! He's heading south! I want a posse! Here's Shorty, you, Jack, Jim! Come on, Bill! Come on! Hey. They won't find him heading south, Blake. My name is Bailey. It wasn't when you were doing time in the federal penitentiary. No use to reach. Right now, you and I are playing on the same team. Want to listen to a proposition? If you got anything to say to me, let's go in the back room. I want to come right to the point, Blake. I can use you, and I think you can use me. What makes you think my name's Blake? The beard might have fooled me, but that knife scar on your hand was the tip-off. See, I had a friend who was serving a sentence at the same time and place as you did. So I know all about you. Go on. I'm listening. 
It wasn't hard to figure that you were here to even things up with Taggart and the son of your other enemy, Don Ramon. Why, Take it easy. I said we're on the same team. I want Valera out of the way as much as I think you do. And why all this talk? Let's follow the posse and get him. Wait a minute. The posse isn't going to catch up with him. I made sure the sheriff would lead him away from Valera. Are you crazy? No. I want you to go after Valera, alone. Huh? I'll tell you where he's hiding. And you're going to be a hero for tracking down and killing an escaping murderer. Where do you come in on this? Uh, it's simple. I'm going to bill a sale for a thousand head of Valera's cattle. He's got my draft for $10,000. Now, if I can get that money back without anybody knowing anything about it, I'll be that much ahead. Less the thousand I figure on giving you. Why don't you go out and get him and you draft yourself? Now, how would that look? I'm supposed to be his friend. You're a smart operator. No, I'm just lucky I happen to be in town buying some cattle the same time you were here for your reason. Say I was willing to go along with you. How do I know you could lead me to Valero? I'm the one that talked the sheriff into hiding him in case anyone got lynch-minded. The sheriff thinks he can sneak Valero out to the county seat as soon as it gets dark. I'll play it your way. Then we'll have enough on each other that we'll both have to keep our mouths shut. Then it was you who knifed Taggart and framed Valera, huh? Yeah. You had it figured right. Get your hands up. I'm the law. You're under arrest. Lucky you got here when you did, Russ. Now we'll have to run for it. The sheriff is probably in on everything. You'll still be able to do what you came here for. Valera's out the sheriff's house with no one except that old windbag to take care of him. How do you know? I saw him and his partner sneaking a wagon out of town with the sheriff. I got suspicious and trailed him. We'll stop by and take care of Valero on our way to the border. Come on. I heard them leave the back room. I heard the sound of their horses galloping away. I couldn't move. But I had to get up and get them before they got to the sheriff's house. I had to. Shoot again. I'll give up. Come out in the open with your hands up. All right, Red? Right as rain, Hoppy. Carlos is, too. Thanks to you and Hoppy. <laughs> All right, Red, get the wagon. We're taking Blake on the first leg of a long, long trip. I'll help you. Well, Sheriff, I'll see that Valera gets home. And the posse will help you get Blake over to the county seat in the morning. And don't worry about a thing. You got enough evidence to evict him a dozen times. Thanks to you, Hoppy. I guess we won't be needing this anymore. Kind of wish you'd keep that badge. 
I might be needing your help again sometime. And you just call and I'll be here. As for you, you big loud mouth, clumsy bold coot foo. Why you long me a wait a minute. <laughs> You're welcome back any time, too. You're a darn good man to have around, particularly when the chips are down. <laughs> <laughs> I found that out a long time ago. So long, Sheriff. Goodbye, Hoppy. Come on, Riff. Bye, right, Sheriff. Hop along Cassidy, hop along Cassidy, he'll return soon again, there's no use to say goodbye until then.